turn a frog into a handsome prince. There really are miraculous transformations in the natural world. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme transformers in the animal kingdom to find the shapeshifter that undergoes the most makeovers. Discover that the ultimate bodybuilders are the animals with lots of different bodies when transformations are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Humans change very little as they go from baby to adult. We get a little bigger, but essentially retain the same basic structures. This is very different to the animals coming up in the countdown, many of which go through such dramatic transformations that young and old could easily be from different species. As humans grow older, the transformation that is perhaps the most noticeable and the least welcome is that our hair turns gray, or worse, falls out. It's thought that two-thirds of adult males will show signs of going bald by the time they turn 60. However, that's nothing compared to our first contender. Twice a year, it loses all the hair on its body. Which sounds like a silly thing to do when you live above the Arctic Circle. This is the story of two furry animals, a white fox and a brown fox. One lives on the ice, the other in the meadows. They may look different, but this is the same animal thanks to a hairy transformation. The Arctic fox is born wearing a brown coat because it contains a pigment called melanin. This is the same compound that colors human skin, hair, and eyes. The only difference is that the Arctic fox has the ability to switch its melanin on and off. As summer draws to a close, the fox starts molting. Eventually, it will replace every hair in its fur coat. The difference is that in response to the shorter days, the fox's brain releases a hormone that stops the production of melanin. So, when the old brown hair falls out, it's replaced by hair with no pigment. That means by the time winter arrives, the brown fox is transformed into a white fox. And six months later, the process is reversed. Strangely enough, there are humans that also completely transform their appearance by replacing all the hair on their body. For some people, dressing up as a furry animal can transform not only the way they look, but also their whole character. For some, it's a way to release the animal spirit within, while others use the costume to explore normally suppressed aspects of their personalities. Whatever the reason, more and more people are joining the furry lifestyle. I've been running around in uh, furry werewolf, werewolf and similar costumes now probably since for about two decades. I just needed to be away from people, and I spent a weekend in the company of wolves. Some furries find that donning the costume frees them from the stifling layers of social convention. I was a 
was that? For other furries, changing their costume is a matter of survival. Not only is the Arctic fox's white fur coat longer and thicker, it also provides better camouflage in the snows of winter. However, this transformation is nothing compared to our next contender. Its camouflage is so good, it can blend into any background. For some people, the best chance of seeing our next contender is on the television. That's because it's capable of transformations that can make it almost invisible. Its camouflage works much in the same way as a television screen. Take a close look at the image and you'll see that the picture is made up of hundreds of tiny dots. Zoom in still closer and you'll see that each dot is made up of three colors. Different combinations of these colors can produce the pictures on the screen and the camouflage of our next contender. It expands and contracts three bags of pigment in its skin. And when there are hundreds of these bags per square centimeter, the animal at number nine in the countdown can transform the color and shape of its whole body. It's the octopus. Being soft and squidgy, the octopus is a treat for many predators. So, it hides from hungry eyes by producing elaborate color patterns and highly complex skin textures capable of matching almost any background. There's a species of octopus that takes transformation one step further, and it's got marine biologists asking questions. Could it really be trying to swim like a flounder? And is this an attempt to copy the shape and color of a sea snake? Is this an octopus or a deadly lionfish? No one knows how or why this animal is capable of such extreme transformations. But it's easy to see why it's called the Mimic Octopus. One man who can twist his body like an octopus is Birkin, the Great Contortionist. One day he was practicing for a show with the Netherlands National Circus when it all went horribly wrong. His leg became firmly wedged behind his back. It was time to call an emergency osteopath. It took a lot of soft tissue massage and a pelvic correction to loosen the leg enough to be manipulated back into place. While Birkin now makes sure he warms up properly before trying any major contortions, the octopus has no such difficulties. Since it has no bones, it can squeeze through a hole not much bigger than one of its eyes. Our next contender also squeezes through tight spaces, not underwater, but underground. So far, we've seen creatures that have found ways to transform their external appearance. But still to come, we'll meet a strange animal that turned itself into a vegetable by eating its own brain. And later, we'll dredge up a creature that changes from a harmless vegetarian into a ravenous cannibal. Some moms have no trouble being pregnant. Having a bulging tum doesn't even stop them taking part in a bikini beauty contest. However, 
for the next contender in our countdown of extreme transformers. The changes associated with pregnancy can cause big problems. While women carry their babies inside a big belly, there's another pregnant mom that's had to come up with a very different way of making room for her offspring. She lives under the plains of Africa. Digging its way into number eight in the countdown is the naked mole rat. These bizarre looking rodents spend their entire life underground. They dig a vast network of narrow tunnels as they search for roots and vegetables. Mole rats are the only mammals to live in a large colony ruled by a queen. She doesn't have to lift a finger because her subjects take very good care of her. All the queen has to do is make babies, which she does better than any other mammal. She can carry 27 pups in a single litter. Unlike a pregnant human, this mom's big belly doesn't stick way out in front of her body. Since she has to continue to squeeze through narrow tunnels, she makes room for more babies by making her belly and body longer, thanks to a transformation unlike any other adult mammal. Imagine if you were like a naked mole rat. Having had your first child, a wave of hormones would trigger a growth spurt unheard of in any other mammal after puberty. Your vertebrae and spinal cord would get 30% longer. Now there's much more room to carry lots of babies. And you don't have to worry about having a big bulging belly that would get stuck in narrow passageways. The queen mole rat's extraordinary transformation makes perfect sense for her life in the dark tunnels under Africa. However, there once was another creature of the night whose terrible metamorphosis terrorized Europe for centuries. There was a time when people really believed in the curse of the werewolf. Back in the Middle Ages, even the slightest hint of abnormality would have been enough to terrorize a village. It was thought you could tell somebody was a werewolf if they had hairy palms, thick eyebrows, and hair under their tongue. Back then, you didn't even need to be bitten by a werewolf to be transformed. It was enough to sleep outside in the light of a full moon or somehow miss going to confession for 10 years. Today, we have more scientific reasons to explain how werewolves came into existence. One theory is that in the Middle Ages, the poor ate rye bread, which was often contaminated with a fungus called ergot. When swallowed, Chemicals in ergot would have caused the hallucinations and delusions that made people think they were wolves. However, there's no doubting the cause of the queen mole rat's transformation. Her expanded backbone means that she can cope with the reproductive demands of the whole colony, even if it means producing more babies each year than any other mammal. So far, we've seen spines that stretch and skins with spots. But there are stranger transformations ahead, including a man who found a way to release the evil within. And later, there's the sizzling, shocking story of a creature that's unsure if it's male or female. To 
find the next contender in our countdown of the most extreme you need to take a close look at the ocean floor. That pile of sand is actually a fish. A flat fish. But to become flat, the fish had to make an extraordinary transformation. Its life began as an egg, drifting with the plankton for a week. Then it hatched into a tiny like its parents, was vertically symmetrical with an eye on each side of its head. But after about a month, it starts to tilt. It swims on a diagonal and one of its eyes starts to migrate to the other side of its head. In the process, some bones degenerate and the entire skull is remodeled. By the time it sinks to the sea floor, it's become horizontally symmetrical. Its mouth opens on the side of its head, both eyes are sitting next to each other, and one flank becomes camouflaged to blend into the sea floor. The flatfish is number seven in the countdown because it transforms the bones of its skull so that it becomes better suited to life on its side. Some humans also look to improve their existence by changing what goes on inside their head. Which is why they visit people like Victoria Wasserman in Connecticut. She can bring about therapeutic changes by helping people enter a trance-like state. Make yourself very comfortable in the chair and allow yourself to listen and float along. I'll be talking to you about many things. And there'll be times when you find that your mind just kind of drifts off and away. And when you find that happens, just bring your mind back to the sound of my voice. Good. Victoria is a hypnotherapist. She only needs the power of her voice to help patients into a trance, where their subconscious mind is thought to take a more active role. Hypnosis is a state of concentrated awareness. It's actually a state where somebody is hyper aware. They can hear everything, smell everything, they can remember things they didn't remember before. They're by no means asleep, they're very much awake. Studies of patients undergoing hypnosis show that there are mental and physical transformations. There's a slowing of the heart rate and a change in brain activity from high frequency alpha waves to lower beta waves. In this extremely relaxed state, patients are open to suggestions for obtaining specific therapeutic outcomes, which is why hypnosis can be used to treat everything from sleep disorders to migraines, pain management to phobias. Now it's time to return your thoughts and awareness to this time and this place. Fully awake, fully alert. Welcome back. A treatment of hypnotherapy would come in handy for a flatfish as it endures the squashing of its head. But that's nothing compared to our next contender. She protects her family by transforming her entire body to become a male. For humans, the decision about whether you're born male or female happens right at the moment of conception. If your father provides an X chromosome, you're a girl. If he supplies a Y chromosome, then you'll be born a boy. However, things are far more complicated for some animals and require a very unusual transformation. 
especially if you're a fish called a wrasse. These tropical reef dwellers don't have separate sex chromosomes. Each individual carries a genetic blueprint for both sexes. However, there are still male and female wrasse. They're not hermaphrodites. The striped male is unmistakable. He's big, bright, and a bully. He completely dominates a harem of lightly colored females, and yet, this tough guy started life as a girl. In fact, all these wrasse started life as females. All it takes is for the bullying male to die, and one of the tougher females will undergo a sex change. Without the male's daily dominance, the female's hormone balance changes. In just two weeks, she becomes a he. Strangely enough, the sex hormones that initiate the wrasse's remarkable transformation are the same that are found in our body. And while human females can't change themselves into males, hormone levels do affect how feminine they look. Researchers have found that levels of estrogen tend to have larger eyes and lips and smaller noses and jaws. Surveys have shown that men find these classically feminine features the most attractive. However, the same study showed women with low levels of the sex hormone can hide the effects with makeup. Cosmetics can mask the visual cues normally seen on the face. By applying makeup, women are effectively fooling the male's visual system because, in evolutionary terms, men will be attracted to women that can have the most babies. A feminine face means the woman has lots of estrogen. Estrogen is linked to the woman's fertility. So it seems the more feminine you can make your face, the better your chances of finding a mate. However, there's nothing feminine about a female wrasse that's had a surge of hormones. She becomes very masculine and very aggressive. After its gender realignment, the male wrasse becomes fiercely territorial. It will attack any intruder, even if it means lashing out at its own reflection in a mirror. At least this gender bender only smashes mirrors. When our next contender transforms, things get really nasty. Our countdown's getting a little twisted as the transformations become increasingly extreme. And things just get weirder when we meet a woman who's in for the ultimate makeover. And later, science fiction becomes fact when an animal gets turned into a vegetable. In 1886, Robert Louis Stevenson wrote a book about a man who suffered a terrible transformation. A brilliant doctor created a potion that released the evil part of his personality. The book was called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The meek Dr. Jekyll is soon overpowered by the twisted Mr. Hyde. It became clear that the two personalities couldn't inhabit the same body. One of them must die.
And every summer, a similar story plays out in the shallow ponds of the Arizona mountains. In this case, the Dr. Jekyll is the tiger salamander. The one species of salamander has two different forms of juvenile. Researchers from Arizona State University have discovered that most larval forms are small plankton feeders. But just a few of their brothers and sisters grow larger with big heads and strong jaws. The big heads are the Mr. Hyde to the little heads Dr. Jekyll because the big heads are cannibals. The big heads eat the smaller plankton eaters. Researchers have discovered that all tiger salamander larvae carry the genetic blueprints to become either plankton feeders or cannibals. Which blueprint they follow depends on the weather. If their pond remains full, there's a feast of plankton and small heads dominate. But if the pond is shrinking, then there are more big heads gorging themselves on their smaller relatives. As summer advances, the pond can shrink to scarcely a puddle. Now the big heads are so bloated they can barely swim. But this is gluttony with a purpose. All that protein is used to build new bodies. Their skin toughens and their gills disappear to be replaced by lungs. The big heads have transformed into air-breathing adult salamanders that are able to see out the dry summer and await the return of the rain. The adult spends most of the summer hiding below ground. When the rains come, it heads off to find a freshly filled pond and a mate. But it won't know if its babies will be big-headed cannibals or small-headed plankton feeders. That's because the tiger salamander is the only animal in the countdown that has transformations that are completely dictated by the weather. In 1956, Hollywood terrified the world with the story of large alien seed pods that replaced humans in a gruesome transformation. Where did they come from? I don't know. Suddenly, while you're asleep, they'll absorb your mind, your memories. Stop and listen to me. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. They're not humans. Real life body snatchers are here already. And you can find them on the bottom of the sea. Down here, there's an animal that turns into a vegetable by eating its own brain. Meet the sea squirt. It's essential that feeds by using two siphons to squirt water through filters inside the body. And if it looks like a plant, there's good reason. It's the only animal in the world that can produce cellulose, the building substance used by plants in their cell walls. It's hard to believe that this vegetable is actually classified as a vertebrate just like us. To understand the connection, you have to see a juvenile sea squirt's amazing transformation. It starts life as an egg floating in the sea. It then hatches into a tiny tadpole-like creature, complete with a simple brain and a characteristic rod that stiffens the tail. 
So how does this small vertebrate become such a vegetable? Imagine if we were like a sea squirt. After a couple of days of swimming around in the plankton, we dive down to find a suitable site on the seafloor and glue our head onto a rock. Then we'd start to completely transform our bodies into little more than a hollow sack. We'd lose our limbs and a few unnecessary internal organs, including our brain. Luckily, you don't have to think much if you spend your life sitting on the seafloor sucking in water. No wonder some humans have found a much easier way to be transformed beyond recognition. Hi. Just ask Rosalani Lozano. Nice to meet Thank you. Are you ready to become a monster? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Rosalani is about to have the world's most extreme makeover thanks to the work of Aubrey Jensen and Caitlin Stimson. They're tutors at the Hollywood Cinema Makeup School. So this is no ordinary face pack. It's actually a rubbery material derived from seaweed. This is the first step in making a life cast of Rosalani's face. Then, she's wrapped in a layer of quick-set bandages to build up a hard shell around her head. It should take about five minutes for it to set, and then we can go ahead and release it. Alright, what we're going to do is going to pry the back of this off, okay? All right, got the back off. Wiggle your face and pull your head out, okay? Like, pull back. Pull back as much as you can. You got it. Woo! After baking, the makeup artists use the cast as a camera to sculpt a new face for Rosalani out of soft clay. And the type of prosthetic appliance that you are going to sculpt is completely up to you. I mean, I've seen robots to monsters to goblins, and I think it's great that you can just completely transform somebody into something completely different that's not even human-like. To complete the transformation, another mold is made and the clay replaced with foam latex. This rubbery material is so soft and flexible that it can move with the actor's face. Okay, Rosalani, you ready for the transformation? Yes. All right. Woo! It can take several weeks to construct a mask and several hours to fit it in place. Are you ready to see yourself? Yes. All right, well, here you are. <laughs> you look good. It's transformations like this that make the Hollywood Cinema Makeup School one of the top training facilities for makeup artists in Los Angeles. But not even the best tutors could recreate the transformation of a sea squirt. At least not without doing a lobotomy. However, if you think losing your brain and a few internal organs is an extreme makeover, just wait till you meet our next contender. When it changes into an adult, a civil war starts inside its own body. So far, we've seen sea squirts lose their brain and salamanders in the rain. But still to come, we discover that even the ugliest bug can leave the ground and become a beauty. And what can turn a frog into a 15-legged freak?
One of the world's most famous transformation stories told of an ugly duckling that one day turned into a beautiful swan. Our next contender takes this story to the extreme because sometimes animals don't get much uglier than a caterpillar. Sure, some are brightly colored to warn of their poisonous contents, but others look like bird droppings. Literally. No matter what their disguise, all caterpillars have one thing in common. They eat. A lot. If a human baby weighed four kilograms at birth and grew at the same rate as a caterpillar, when fully grown it would weigh more than 100,000 kilograms. No wonder caterpillars end up big and bloated. All that food is fuel for an extreme transformation during pupation. Very early in the caterpillar's life, several clumps of cells were set aside in various parts of the body. These clumps eventually become adult structures like wings, eyes, and legs, but they don't do anything until the caterpillar pupates. Then, a kind of civil war breaks out. The adult components use chemical weapons to overpower the caterpillar parts, which are recycled to build a rapidly increasing number of adult cells. These massive changes are triggered by hormones. And while humans don't pupate, fluctuating hormones can play a part in some significant transformations. When a woman finishes menstruating, her ovaries stop producing the hormone estrogen. This can lead to hot flashes, sleeplessness, and mood swings associated with menopause. While aging men don't experience such a dramatic fall in hormone production, fluctuating levels of testosterone can bring about some unusual transformations. Researchers have discovered that married men have significantly lower testosterone levels than their unmarried counterparts. What's more, a man's testosterone levels drop significantly when he holds an infant. Even holding a baby doll can decrease the male virility hormone. Lower levels of testosterone may increase the likelihood that men will stay at home and care for the wife and kids, while decreasing the chances that they'll go out drinking with the guys and chase other women. But should the marriage end in divorce, testosterone levels surge back upwards again. However, there's no reversing the caterpillar's transformation. As the emerging butterfly inflates its body with pressurized fluids, the case of the pupa splits open along a line of weakness. The fat, lumbering caterpillar has been metamorphosed into a delicate butterfly. It's a remarkable change, but still to come are animals that transform many more times en route to becoming an adult. You may have trouble spotting our next contender because it's an insect that's a real master of disguise. Even before it's born, it can fool a colony of ants into keeping it safe. Ants are ferocious predators and will usually eat any insect they can find. So our next contender lays eggs that come attached to a tasty treat. An ant will pick up the egg, take it back to the nest, cut off the food reward and throw the rest of the unappetizing egg into the garbage dump where it can develop in safety. Eventually it hatches and leaves the colony in a cunning disguise. If you look like an ant, lots of potential predators will keep their distance. But this is just the first transformation made by the animal at number two in the countdown. 
after a few weeks it slows down, uncurls its tail, and does a remarkable impersonation of an even scarier animal, the scorpion. And there's still one more transformation left. At last, the true identity of the animal is revealed, assuming that you can see through its remarkable camouflage. Simply by standing still, the giant prickly stick insect can transform itself into a pile of dead leaves. Throughout its life, the stick insect uses a series of cunning disguises to keep predators at bay. It's number two in the countdown because it undergoes three transformations as it pretends to be a dead leaf, a scorpion, and an ant. However, not even the stick insect can compete with the life-changing events that happen to the most extreme transformer in the countdown. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal is a more extreme transforming machine. The most extreme transformer in down has one of the world's most complicated life cycles, and it lives inside the bodies of other animals. You can find it in wetlands where there are frogs. Most unusual frogs. This adult amphibian has sprouted 15 limbs from all over its body. Only two of the legs are actually functional. What could have caused these strange mutations? Was it radioactivity? Was it pollution? Scientists only recently discovered that the cause was completely natural, but far more scary. Their search led them inside the bodies of predatory animals like snakes and herons, because their intestines are home to the most extreme transformer in the countdown. It's a parasitic flatworm called Riberia. If this adult form is phase one of the life cycle, the first transformation begins when the flatworm releases eggs into the gut, where they're passed out with the dropping of the water. The eggs hatch into a tiny free-swimming larva that goes in search of a new host. This is phase two of the life cycle. Its target is an unsuspecting freshwater snail. The larva burrows into the flesh and feeds, preparing itself for another transformation into a much bigger tadpole-like creature. This is phase three of the life cycle. It digs itself out of the poor old snail's body and goes in search of yet another host. This time, it's a tadpole. Once again, it burrows through the skin and takes up residence around the tadpole's rear end. Here, it transforms again, this time into a cyst. It stays in this phase while the tadpole undergoes a transformation of its very own, losing the tail, growing legs, and becoming a frog. It just so happens that frogs are the favorite food of birds like herons.
Once back inside the predator, the cyst hatches and grows into the adult worm. Eventually, it will produce eggs inside the bird's intestines and the cycle starts all over again. This parasitic worm is number one in the countdown because to survive in many different hosts, it has to transform into many different creatures. But the story doesn't finish here. Since the cycle can only be completed if an infected frog gets eaten by a predator, the parasite has found a way to handicap its host. Remember how the cysts form in the tail region of the tadpole? Well, during metamorphosis, somehow the cysts cause the frog to develop with many extra limbs, or even no limbs at all. These mutant frogs are actually the result of the parasite. Cysts form in clusters around the joints of the frog's developing limbs. Thanks to the parasite, the frog is basically crippled. All it can do is sit there and wait for a predator to come along and swallow both it and its cargo of cysts. For the frog, it's a terrible way to die. For the parasite, it's an insurance policy to maximize the chances of completing its incredible life cycle. Which is why, when it comes to transformations, this parasitic worm really is the most extreme.